If you've been around and have watched enough of my content, then you know that I do enjoy retro games or retro-inspired games. So it probably comes as no surprise that a game like Streets of Rage 4 would make it onto my list. But when it comes to games of this ilk, I have to make sure I separate nostalgia from what the game is at the end of the day. And while I'm a huge fan of the Streets of Rage series, I'm not afraid to acknowledge its faults and understand that beat-em-ups aren't for everyone. But at the end of the day, Streets of Rage 4, while not amazing in all aspects, nails the ones that keep people coming back longer than the credits have stopped rolling, and proves that the developer knows what it is about arcade-style beat-em-ups that people love. Let's get into it. The story of Streets of Rage can be summed up in a few sentences. It is defined by the very era of which games of its type can also be defined. The city is terrorized under the thumb of an evil organization, and it's up to a subset of heroes to defeat the leader of this organization. In the early 90s, this could be applied to nearly every beat-em-up that based its setting on the modern era. Streets of Rage also fits this mold, but not without reason. During the Nintendo vs Sega era, Streets of Rage was Sega's answer to Nintendo's final fight. You'd be hard pressed not to find similarities between the two. Oh my god. Streets of Rage 4's story dips back into the history of the franchise, but instead of simply reviving the villain, his legacy lives on in his now adult offspring, who have also picked up and recreated what their father started under a new name. This marks the return of the series' original heroes, Axel, Blaze, and Adam, and it's quite clear that the years have been more kind to some than others. Overall, it's your typical action movie story, but let's be real here, you aren't coming to Streets of Rage for the story. Breaking down the gameplay structure of beat-em-ups is rather simple. You hit your opponent with enough punches and kicks to reduce their life bar to zero. Once you've defeated all the enemies on the screen, you move forward to the next screen and face the next wave of enemies. One of the common arguments that detractors of beat-em-ups make is that the gameplay is too simple, requires little skill, and is quite shallow. And on the surface level, these would appear to be correct, more specifically in the context of 90s era beat-em-ups. But when digging a bit deeper into what it is that fans of beat-em-ups love about the genre, an understanding of the gameplay becomes more complex. To break down this concept will take more time than this video is worth, so I'll make it simple. Beat-em-ups and fighting games have a lot in common, and the reasons why people love both have quite a bit of crossover. So how does this relate to Streets of Rage 4? Easy. The developers have demonstrated that they have an understanding of this concept and have found a way to blend modern fighting game mechanics into an old-school beat-em-up. Everything from wall bounces, OTGs, air juggles, cancels, supers, the works. One of the most addicting aspects of fighting games is the moment when you open your opponent up to a new crazy combo you've been practicing and perfecting for a long time. Streets of Rage 4 opens the door to allow such a possibility in a beat-em-up thanks to translating these sensibilities into the game without completely losing that easy-to-play, hard-to-master aspect of beat-em-ups. When Streets of Rage 4 was announced, I was cautiously optimistic, mostly due to concerns that the core of what Streets of Rage is as a video game probably wouldn't translate well to the sensibilities of modern games today. And because, well, beat-em-ups don't gain traction the way they used to back in the 90s. But another concern that kept recurring in my mind was what the game would look like visually. As someone that has a bit of affinity for razor-sharp looking pixel art, this was essentially what I expected a new Streets of Rage to look like. And I'll be honest when I say I was slightly disappointed when the footage finally surfaced and revealed this was not the case. What was shown instead was an art style akin to that of a comic book, or what you'd see out of a lot of animated action cartoons in the West. When the game was finally in my hands, and after spending a considerable amount of time with it, I can say that I grew to love it. To the point where I've concluded that this was, in my opinion, the best choice. Allow me to elaborate. The animation of characters and objects in the game gives off that cool animated TV show vibe. When looking at how smoothly frames blend together, whether that be characters just walking through the environment, comboing thugs into oblivion, or the flashiness of special attacks and super moves, it helps to give the game its own unique identity. 
Neon lights of local shops and restaurants pop and reflect off of puddles of rainwater, giving the game a very distinct atmosphere. This then gets mixed up by throwing the player into sterile looking art galleries and pristine corporate buildings. One of the problems I had with the game's overall aesthetic was the lack of more wild environments such as beaches and forests that even the original games took advantage of. There's also perhaps a bit too much focus on trying to recapture the dirty, dingy atmosphere of the series. Then there's the music, something that many would argue is perhaps the second most important part of making any Streets of Rage title. As diverse and incredibly well crafted the music is in Streets of Rage 4, it comes across as a bit too diverse. Simply put, I couldn't pin down a theme to the game's soundtrack, whereas the originals at least stuck with the idea of the kind of music you can bang your head to. Personally, Streets of Rage 4 had a few tracks that captured this feeling. This puts it only slightly above Streets of Rage 3 in my book when it comes to the soundtrack. With Streets of Rage 2 taking first place and Streets of Rage 1 taking second place on my favorite soundtracks in the series. At the end of the day, Streets of Rage 4 is a fantastic modernization of what the franchise can be in the modern era. From how addicting the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay can be, down to the smart blend of beat-em-up and fighting game mechanics. And while the music may not hit all the right notes, I still find myself going back to the game over a year later and trying out new combos. It skillfully capitalizes on what people love about beat-em-ups and challenges them to learn something new along the way. It left me rather excited to see what the talented folks at Lizard Cube and Guard Crush Games have in store for us next and help claim its spot on my list of favorite games of 2020. <laughs> 